All right, I finally saw Furiosa in IMAX. Let's talk about it. What is up everybody? After hearing all the sad stories of Furiosa bombing, I thought, you know what? I was interested in this film. I got a bunch of friends with me to watch it in IMAX on a Tuesday, so it was half off price for the tickets. Uh, we saw it late night and it was a fun time. It was fantastic. I, I really enjoyed the experience. I will say um, the reason why it's bombing, I can see why. I don't want to say that these films are bro movies because it's far from it. There's a lot of smart storytelling behind them but you know when you cast a movie with Tom Hardy and Mel Gibson and then the new one starring Anya Taylor-Joy it's I can see where people are coming from but I don't think it's warranted because she does fantastic in this film I think you know her being this hundred pound framed person going up against these big buff dudes it, it can seem a little tiny bit uh, unrealistic, but again, most of the action is with guns, with explosive, with bombings in cars. So there's no real hand-to-hand -hand combat. And when there is, she's able to use her smarts, her skills, her survival skills being taught from her mother and that kind of thing. And so it makes sense. I think the only time where I was like, ooh, this is Anya Taylor-Joy's when I think she's walking down like a, a, like a steep hill. She's like, mm -hmm. so I was like, mm, okay. But for the most part, I really did enjoy the film. If you're a real big fan of Fury Road, this isn't going to be as satisfying because the problem was there was a lot of CGI in this. And even though I don't really care for CGI that much and the first film, like the first, like the reboot, a lot of it was practical. A lot of it was filmed in, in Africa. If the original Mad Max was 60-40, this is the opposite around. Like this is 40-60 where... Probably 40% of it was live action and probably even less of it was live action because a lot of CGI and I will say the CGI was very apparent but I kind of chopped it up to this is George Miller style because I also want to say that this is probably besides early Spielberg films where the high budget big budget summer blockbuster film has a director's tinge to it it has like you can watch this film and immediately know based on the color palettes based on the writing that this is a george miller film it is a bit quirky it is a bit you know silly but i love how it's also like it's it's george miller like it does not feel like those cash grabby uh, Disney, you know, f live action remakes. Like, did you know the Dumbo remake was made by Tim Burton? You would have never guessed. Or that Aladdin was made by Guy Ritchie? Like, are you kidding? Are you shitting me? This, you can immediately tell that it's George Miller. It looks fantastic in IMAX, and I bet it's going to look so good on 4K Blu-ray. I already have the Steelbook uh, pre-ordered. I will say, though, that as an IMAX experience, you're definitely going to get the audio experience. Visually, it looks fantastic. You know, you're getting the deeper uh, colors with that laser projection, but it's not in full IMAX aspect ratio. Uh, it is in the 16 by 9 aspect ratio, so you are going to get the black letter box bars on the top and the bottom of the screen. I do get a little disappointed when it, when, when that happens because I've seen such like amazing films like Dune 2. I've seen recently Civil War were in full IMAX aspect ratio. So it kind of feels weird that this wasn't in it, but again... I think maybe because there's a lot of CGI, so maybe they're trying to keep the same benchmarks when it comes to that. But going on to the action aspects of it, the sound design was fantastic. You really get the feeling of the rumbling cars. Sometimes it was too loud, like when Furiosa gets in this, like, uh, I think this desert rider was this all black desert, like, car. So loud, like, it was, it was starting to hurt, like, my ears. Like, it was really loud, and it's exhilarating. Like, you really get that tense. But for me, honestly, it got a little too much because it kept going and going and going. Like, when they say full throttle chaos, chaos mayhem, it is, the, it is that. But it being the longest in the franchise, it numbed me at a certain point when there's guns going off and there's explosions and fire and... and loud cars i was just like uh, uh, uh. but uh it it wasn't too bad because there are a lot a lot of standout sequences where action is used and it's done effectively and it, it really gets the pulse pounding and you, you it, it's a badass movie and it does this the franchise justice what i didn't like was chris hemsworth 
Beast's character, I think it was extremely throwawayable. Like, I didn't like that he was the main source of comedy. Like, I don't like when villains are the comedic relief, but here is the case. Uh, Akin to Dustin Hoffman's portrayal as Hook, Captain Hook in Hook, he gives that kind of same goofy, silly performance that's more larger than life character. But I can see, again, I can see that also happening uh, realistically because this is like the leader of a, of a, big, of a big gang of people and, and it makes sense. I'm not gonna spoil any plot points because I don't think it's necessary for this review. And if you wanna see it, I highly recommend you go check it out. Anya Taylor-Joy as Furiosa. I didn't mind it as, as much as a lot of people uh, that I'm seeing on the internet do. I don't care. Uh, I was mainly taken aback that they didn't cast Charlize Theron in a sequel. I was hoping that's what we would get, but that is not what we got. We got a prequel starring Anya Taylor-Joy. I will, I'm not gonna, this is not a spoiler, but this is just how the, uh, the, the film is paced. So it's two hours and 25 minutes about, you know, not including credits, which is a fantastic uh, sequence. I, I would recommend you stay for the credits because it's really fun. Half of the movie is Furiosa as a child. So like an, a, a whole hour is dedicated to how Anya Taylor-Joy's character, how Furiosa goes from being a child in this in this Eden situation to her being entrusted into this role of this warrior character who paints her face all black and that or her who paints her forehead all black it, it takes you from there and to an hour in and then you get adult Furiosa and then it ends right as like it's cool because it ends right as Fury Road starts so this is like, this will be a great double feature, which will be a, it'll be a five hour double feature if you want to watch Furiosa and then Mad Max. I thought it was really cool that they segued it into Fury Road and then you can watch Fury Road right after. It was really fun. It was great. You know, they introduced a lot of, uh, they introduced a lot of characters that were throwaway characters that you know weren't going to show up. They did have a Morton Joe uh, recasted because I believe the original original actor who played Immortan Joe uh, has passed away. This was a 14A film here in Canada and it doesn't feel that. There is scenes of intense gore and people getting their heads cut off, limbs cut off, being burned alive, seeing people hanging, the charred remains of people hanging, seeing maggots eating like necro necrotting flesh off of people. It was, I was not, I was surprised they did not hold punches. So you're not gonna get this like woke, uh, like cash grabby film that a lot of people were expecting out of a, out of this Furiosa film. They just casted a new actress that's very popular to sell some tickets. And, and Anya Taylor-Joy is, is a fantastic actor and she's, you know, portrayed herself in a lot of like big budget, like, like poppy mainstream films, but she's also been in things like The Northmen and The Witch and those kind of things where she's shown her depth as an actress. So the, she continues it here and she's fantastic here. The dialogue again is cheesy as hell. It's silly, but I like the way that it's told very seriously, but the only silliness is in, again, the writing, but the, it's not like silly as in like MCU joke, 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 joke here. It's like, it's very Shakespearean and it feels like a play. It feels like a very time as old, a tale as old as time. Like points, it was a very generic, like brave hearty, like kind of hero story, uh, you know, having, you know, the developmental, the, the peak, the rise, all of those things are gonna happen in this film, but I think it's done well. It's done really creatively. Like the thing that took me off was the CGI, going back to the CGI. It was very obvious. It what it was because it's a very stylistic film in general. But like, but there's a lot of sequences that feel like a video game. CG like models were rendered really like like it doesn't like it threw me off a bit because there'll be scenes where it's just like a person like on a bike with like a green screen background and it looks really really cheesy. But I think that just adds to like the quirkiness of it and just because it is a big budget, uh, you know, summer blockbuster film, 165 or $168 million. And you know, that's getting up there. Cause if it was like a hundred million dollars, I'd be like, okay, yeah, sure. Because you know, when it gets to almost that 200 million range, that's like Sp Spider-Man era, like that kind of thing. So, uh, but I think it, it, it does it well because it is so stylistic and, and it just adds to the movie. There's a lot of scenes where the camera will be placed in a certain row, 
but the post-production and the editor would like go in and shake it around and stuff with the editing software and it looked really weird threw me off a bit but uh i don't know i wasn't a big fan of the cgi here but i i don't think it really stained my experience of it it just it feels very obvious like this is not going to be like this immersive film where it's like whoa wow uh this dystopian world no it's a very you know like it's very fallouty it's very borderlandsy uh, if you've played those games that's how it kind of feels and it was a romp it was a fun time i'm not going to go into the characters and that kind of thing but i just think that this is worth checking out in IMAX with the sound system, with the more richer uh, colors through the laser projection. I think you're getting your money's worth and I would recommend it. For the movie, for the IMAX experience, I'm gonna give this about uh, an eight out of 10. Those two marks are just for the full IMAX aspect ratio because I'm just a nut for that and I love it. Seeing it out there is a little disappointing, but again, it, I, I, it, it's a service to film fine. I just would have liked that more, just to see more awesomeness, shall I say. So this gets my badass seal of approval. Uh, I'd recommend this film as a narrative, as a storytelling venue of Mad Max. I'd give this a seven out of 10. This is um, my probably where it ranks. Number one for me is still the original 1979 Mad Max, then Mad Max uh, Road Warrior and then Fury Road, and then uh, Furiosa, and then uh, Beyond Thunderdome. Because Beyond Thunderdome is just a shit movie, in my opinion. It, it, it's, it's really horrible. But these new movies go back to what Mad Max was supposed to be. This gritty, this, you know, balls to the wall, this, you know, no holds barred kind of film. And you get that here. Again, action's fantastic. You see people get burned alive. You see people get crushed by cars. You see people get heads chopped off. You see them hung. You see them get limb from limb torn off. It's... It's, it's what, you're gonna get that good vicious fun, that gore, the, the loud cars, the racing, you get all that. This is probably the most, I think, driving and like those action sequences in any film. This one is if you took Mad Max Fury Road, pumped it with steroids and just threw it off the cliff with a bunch of computer graphics. So I still think I'd prefer Fury Road because I think I gave Fury Road like an eight. This is a seven and I think it's, it's still a fun ride. It's definitely worth uh, the ticket price to see in theaters. Uh, I saw it with a very fun crowd. No one was yelling, no one was talking, no one was on their phone. Everyone was respectful. Respectful. Everyone was laughing at the points where you should laugh and it was a good thing. No one was laughing at weird points because there it is very weirdly designed. But overall, seven out of 10. IMAX experience, eight out of 10. Seats were comfortable. Projection was great, temperature was great. I saw this in the IMAX theater in Cineplex at the Winston Churchill location in Oakville. I recommend you go there. Fantastic projection uh, system and it looked really great and I would recommend it. Anyways, that was my review of Furiosa. I have the 4K steelbook coming out soon and I can guarantee you it's gonna look fantastic. If you're not a fan, again, of the hyper stylized CG graphics of it, it may not be for you, but this will definitely be a, a Dolby Vision tester as was Fury Road. So that was my opinion. Let me know down below if you checked out Furiosa and what you thought about it. Anyways, I've been Mitch from the Mockbuster YouTube channel. Please have yourself a good day, night, evening, afternoon, morning, whenever you're watching this. And if you're gonna die, make it epic. See you later.